Hey, what's going on guys? It's me, Train Man, and welcome back to the weekly timetable for the week of September 28th, 2014. We have with us six videos this week. No Terminus podcast, but still um, everything else. We'll point out right now, while I remember it, that this Monday is going to be the last module Minecraft. We will be starting Simulation Protocol Overload, a complete the monument map, not by Vex, but uh, by, hold on, I have it here, I have it right here, right here, Tikaro HD, uh, he's previously made another map called Simulation Protocol Animosity, I haven't played it, but I've heard it's pretty good, so I am very much anticipating this next thing, and we have the League of Extraordinary Minecrafters, brand new name, totally, yeah, I can't take credit for that, but Anyways, it's myself, Chris Kerfoot, and John Holmes that you remember, and Wybold4449. Uh, you may notice him in a couple of things. I have him linked to on the channel on the side, Mind with Show Why. We did a series called Minecraft Railroad Tycoons a little while ago, trying to get that kicked off again, but that is a different story. So, to start off this week, we had the second to last module of Minecraft for the time being. That'd be Module of Minecraft Episode 67 the new quarry, because we had to move the quarry from where it used to be to where it currently is, and there's a lot of me not really sure about what else I can do. I mean, we work on the enchanting table a little bit, but I just kind of wander around. I think I've... I, I don't know enough about the mods to know what I can do next, and maybe next time I'll spend some more time researching, but we're probably going to keep the world around, because I really don't foresee an update in Feed the Beast Ultimate for... ever. So... When Module Minecraft comes around again, we might just kick it right off, or we might start a new one, depending on what kind of mod packs are out. Get into the pit. Thank you. I will send you into the pit, too. Or I'll just kill you right here, because why not? Hey, stop it. Oh, this is getting... this is gonna get hell... hellish real quick. Excuse me while I eat some strawberries. No, no, no. Stop shooting. I'm eating. Either stop shooting or keep missing. He's gonna shoot me into the hole. Yeah, I can't shoot from directly above you, can you? Ha ha. On Tuesday, we had Trade Man Plays Chris Orr's Locomotion, episode 148. Iron Overload and Oil Experiments. Now, the most important part of the video is probably the second part of the title, which is the oil experiments. What we start... It really is an experiment with oil. It's an experiment with train pathfinding and just what I can do to get several different stations to have an equal number of trains without necessarily getting an equal number of, number of trains for all those stations. Uh... I had them hooked up to a single yard so that when one would clear, another train would come and fill that one, no matter what, no matter which trains were actually waiting in that yard. Didn't quite pan out because of the way the system was built. I'm sure I could refine the concept considerably, but next episode, well, we do a little bit of that, but it's not, it's not what I'm thinking right now. Yeah, it's a little bit of an experiment with locomotion pathfinding, and we find out a couple of things that we really already knew. Uh, and a couple of things that you can and can't do, and just how to get some certain things to work. We don't have any sort of lines over here, so... Well, that's kind of... Yeah, it's really pitiful. It's bottom-of-the-barrel stuff right there. No pun intended. I mean, it is oil, but no pun intended. 210. I mean, I suppose we can make do with those if we plunk a station right here or right here. I think here would be the better uh, bet. Unless we just put one at each. I mean, hmm. If I could, I wish I could bind them together to be one big station. Uh, because then I could have the train pick which one to go to. Maybe there's a way I can do that. Uh, I mean, not not literally, of course, but. If I route everything through a common waypoint, and then the train will try to get to that waypoint, and then 
it'll just fill in whichever one of these is empty. That on Wednesday, we had War Thunder episode 26, Jader Chiefs and Trains. Now, I don't stand by that remark. In fact, I'm against it. But you'll, you'll hear about that in the video. In the video, we discuss, well, trains and making routes and things and there's some shooting down and honestly I think the quality of the videos are getting marginally better because I feel like I'm actually getting better at dogfighting. Uh, that may just be the placebo effect where I'm like you know I really need to get better at dogfighting so I just do it more and it feels like I'm doing better because I spend more time actually fighting. Of course then you get the uh, people who yell at you for not playing the objective and then you get people that yell at you for playing the objective. Can't win but Anyways, so just a few battles there with some people, have fun. Yeah, War Thunder as always. And now we see the wait, and now we see the elusive uh, B seventeen J. <laughs> G J the J. Are you crazy? G. I wish that Shut was. Up. I wish that was in game. Jesus. Yes, the B seventeen Jesus comes with twenty extra guns. No, it just bombs <laughs> with holy water. Death no, guy. I didn't mean to hit F1. Son of a gun. What did you do? I opened the help menu. Oh no. That's not good. I, I crashed on the ground doing that once. That sucked. I was on a two kill streak. I killed it. Teamwork, yet I've done nothing yet. On Thursday, we had the Zombie Train episode 90. Now, I'm still trying to wrap my head around the fact that it's on Thursday. I, I keep wanting to say Friday, and my mind is kind of short-circuiting, going, that shouldn't be there. The next one should be... Uh, space Engineers, but Space Engineers is later. How to Mountain. Now, <laughs> what's funny is I made a short story entitled How to Mountain some time ago. Has nothing to do with this at all, but the title was funny enough, so I used it again. Really, it's just an exercise in sloped valleys, really, that come off of a contour and slope down using multiple spline points and adjusting this, that, and the other. Next episode, we're dealing with huge swamps again. Episode after that, don't know yet. And episode after that, we're doing a, uh, a session. So we'll see how that all pans out. I might do the sessions from now on in TS-12, but I am a little bit wary about that because I don't know what kind of changes that will entail, really. I haven't, I haven't, gone, through the, the, I haven't gone through hell with the content manager again to pull out another CDP of the TV and ARR. So I haven't updated the version that I keep in Trains 12 for quite some time, nor do I have the session with all the pre-programmed industries already built into it. So that's why I've been having thoughts about moving over in the first place, because it'll give me, it'll grant me access to a lot more uh, in terms of rolling stock, but if I just do the sessions in there, then I get kind of the best of both, where I have all the assets that I would ever need to make the route complete in 06, and I know, and I have lots and lots of rolling stock and track work for uh, sessions in 12, because the download station actually works. As I said, we continue to work on this, work on this area here. Now, I could have sped this up, and I was on the fence about doing it, although I realized the video would have been cut back even more at that point. Oh, that's what I do. So I put a switch there. I haven't done that too often when I've been working with terrain tracks, but I have done it before. Uh, but it's just a, it's a equalization procedure, because now we have more spline points on one side than we do on the other, so that side advances quicker. And it's just a message, uh, it's just a method to catch everything back up to the same location and kind of make sure everything's going to work out. On Friday, we had Train Man's Fever, Episode 5, The Bypass, because in the immortal words of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, as the description says, you've got to build bypasses. And I had... Oh, this deserves a shout-out. Somebody... Uh, oh, I need to answer that comment. Bob Smith. Love it. And of course, I said love this comment. I plus one it all the above, because don't panic, right? And never forget where your towel is. Either way, we try to make a little way to get... Our, our station, of course, in this world is very constricted. It didn't pan out so well when we originally set everything up. There are a lot of 
very high priced buildings springing up around it and kind of closing in on us. And until we get a lot of money, we're not going to be able to break out of that. So, what I decided to do, because we're starting to run oil trains up and down that line, is to build a line around the town. Of course, we don't have waypoints yet, so it's kind of a pain to get the trains to use it. But I built a line around the center of the town and avoiding the station so that we won't ever have oil trains waiting behind passenger trains or in the future have the slow oil trains blocking the passenger trains. So I think that was a good idea on our part. Set line, line five. This is going to be our bottleneck. Maybe I should build a freight bypass. You've got to build bypasses. I think I might do that. So that we don't have to route them through that station, which is undoubtedly going to get... It can only get worse, really. On... Saturday, we had Space Engineers Episode 9, Nice Ship, Derp Ship. This is part one of two, uh, because I wanted to get a week ahead, so now we're a week ahead. And, yeah, we have a new person, TB, uh, not TBA Avenger, we had him last week. We have, uh, TRG, TRG Sniper. And he is about as good as the game at the game as the rest of us. Maybe even somehow less, but uh, I feel like everyone that again and they'll have to walk through is just another kind of new take on things, because everyone will adapt to the game in their own different play styles, like you have Minecraft where people will build certain ways, people will start out doing certain things, like get this amount of cobblestone, build a furnace here next to your crafting bench, and this, that, and the other, and certain people in Space Engineers will I just kind of go straight into an asteroid or just park on top of one and use the gravity generator like we did last episode or uh, uh, kit out their starter ship or build a whole new ship or build a cruiser straight off or this that and the other and the that's what I love about sandbox games you can really do pretty much anything in them we could really do anything and that's why I like space engineers why do things like to take off? This is why you put gyroscopes on things. That's probably the first. I I definitely hadn't gotten to this point to that point yet. You realize I barely even had a cockpit. I had the frame of a cockpit. Construction components, large. I need a motor. Can you bring me a motor? That would be nice. Wait, no. Oh, oh so close. Kind of got my so own close. things to work I'm so on. So close, bro. And then I have my gyroscope, and then it'll never float off. Well, actually. It will, because the gyroscope will only arrest rotation, not uh, actual good point, movement. But it's still better than nothing. So, video of the week candidates. Moving on. Oh, one more thing about the League of Extraordinary Minecrafters. As well as the Space Engineer series, you might not see Ojili's back for a couple of episodes, because uh, unfortunate things have happened to him. Not physical-wise, he's just not been so good on the grade side of things. So, he is... Not going to be with us for a short amount of time. He'll be back soon enough. Chris, however, has gotten it a lot worse. He fell and broke his left wrist, which means can't use WASD. Uh, from what I heard, he fell. It could have been something else. But he can't use WASD, and... Well, I told him to learn lefty and put the mouse on the other side so he can just kind of, you know... Uh, what's the word? Stub at it? Stub the mouse? Uh, it would still be a considerable bit of trouble for him to do that. Of course, you could map uh, different keys to the mouse or whatever, but I hope he will appear in the first episodes of Simulation Protocol Overload. Uh, however, he may not be playing a playing an actual significant role, and we may have to... While I, while I don't intend to wait up for him, because when he gets... when he finally gets the ability back to his hand, and God knows he's a gamer, and he's going to be prioritizing the ability to play with us above a lot else. It may take him a little while to get on his feet, so John and Weibold and I are just kind of going to forge ahead, and he's hopefully going to be in the game with us, although he may be having to follow behind uh, quite a ways and try to stay out of danger as much as possible. That's my, that's my hopes, at least. I mean, John played forever with a trackpad, which is, you know, a handicap in and of itself, uh, but if he can 
WASD with his right hand and then move the mouse where he needs to go and then WASD. I don't know. I haven't talked through it with him about uh, if and how he's going to be in the episodes, the first episodes, and how that's going to work out for him. But I'm very much just hoping that that happens to be the case. That he's going to be with us. If not, he'll show up a little ways in. Of course, we're, we aren't going to beat the episode in a month. Or we aren't going to beat the... Uh, uh, map in a month's worth of videos, so he'll be he'll be around soon enough. He actually broke two bones in his wrist, which is why it's going to take a little while for him to heal. We have two video of the week candidates. I, w I just didn't gather too many other ones because the first one was pretty great, and I thought it was going to take the cake until I noticed a train levitation. But uh, the first one is ping pong and plates and gravity, which is really cool. Uh, guy with a ping pong ball doing some epic trick shots, just bouncing them off plates like the one in the thumbnail is one, two, three, four, five, six plates you can see. And uh, I think that's the extent of it, but he basically drops the thing and it bounces off one, next, 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 and into a cup every time. Perfection. And I'm pretty amazed. I, I wonder how many takes it took to get all of those. And I wonder if there's going to be a blooper reel somewhere in there. Although, ping pong ball bloopers are not nearly as bad as human bloopers. are not nearly as funny, so, oh well. But uh, the video that does take the cake this week is some train levitation. Now, you know in uh, in Back to the Future, uh, the third one at the end when there's the flying time traveling train Doc Brown comes in with, and you know he has his sons on board and whatever. This isn't anything like that, because well, first of all, it's not a movie. Second of all, it's not a steam engine, so you know not nearly as cool. But this is really cool looking. Of course, it's not actually levitating either, but it looks like they basically lifted a maintenance of weight train, train car, whatever that is. It looks like a, uh, not a flanger, but like, I don't know, it might be pouring ballast or something? I, I didn't get a good look at it. But just up off the rails by about a foot, and it's, it looks like it's hovering above the track, and they just spin it around, just like three guys, spin it around, and then lower it back down. Spoilers, it's a hydraulic piston underneath the middle of the thing, but it looks frigging amazing. It looks like they're just legitimately raising the thing in the air uh, by sheer force of will. Or magic. One of the two. And uh, spinning it 180 degrees. It's pretty fantastic. So go check that out. That'll be in the description below. And, um... Yeah, even so, it's a really spindly, uh... Really spindly hydraulic watch him above it. So hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I don't think I have anything else significant to talk about. We've got some changes on the way. Need to make a train fever thumbnail still, but I'll sure I'll get to that one soon enough. Uh, I think I know what I can do now, now that I'm thinking of it. Didn't I just keep it keeps slipping my mind. Need to redo the banner on the channel because we don't have five things anymore. In fact, we have seven. So I'm really not sure what I'm going to do about that. And I could use a good background as well. So I might want to put some effort into that. For now, it's going to stay the way it is. Uh, but until later, or soon enough, I'll hopefully have all that resolved. I just don't have time to do anything artsy lately, unfortunately. Uh, the first round of exams is over, but the second one is already, like, right in my face. So... I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next week. And simulation protocol animosity. Yes.